to another episode of Battle Axe, the most popular axe throwing show in all the land. I'm Joey the Jaw Danya, alongside Bobby the Blade Bradford. As always, we're coming to you from the Boston Axe Throwing Range in Dubuque, Iowa. It's week three of this seven week regular season, leading up to our double elimination postseason tournament where we will crown a battle axe champion if you're new to the program here's how the scoring works all of those rings moving inwards towards the bullseye they're worth one two three four and five points the bullseye is worth six points that small blue dot on the outermost ring that's what's called a kill shot at any point in the match a player can go for a kill shot if they hit it they get eight points if they miss it they get zero points here's what everyone is competing for the Battle Axe Championship Belt, Bobby. The beautiful Battle Axe Championship Belt, Matt the Magic Man Bradshaw is the reigning champion, holding on to the belt throughout the season, but there are plenty of competitors in this league that like to take it home for themselves here, Joey. It is a thing of beauty, and you can bet that the Magic Man is probably wearing that thing all around town, all around the house. I would never take it off. I would never take it off, too. You're right, Joey. He's brought the belt to a couple of league nights already, just uh, reminding everyone what they're chasing and playing for. Let's take a look at the standings. After two weeks of competition, Matt the Magic Man Bradshaw, our defending champion, is leading the way, a perfect 8-0, and averaging more than 56 points per game as he looks to defend his championship belt. Behind Bradshaw, it's Chris D'Onofrio, Casey Nines, Eric Schizzle, Cody Yoakum, Hannah Brussel, Brandon Feenstra, Sarah Fitting, Stephanie Prine, and Matt Haas rounding out the top 10. We are set to go here in week number three, but before we get the competition started, here's Casey Nines on his goals for this week. Uh, my goals this week, I mean, last week I was throwing some pretty good games. I started getting more of those, those bullseyes, so this week I'm just going to kind of continue the same, um, really zone in on those bullseyes, those kill shots. They're starting to become uh, more important. These games are getting real close lately. Uh, everyone's playing really well, so I'm just kind of focusing on my game at this point. Casey Laser Wolf Nines looking to get into postseason form here in week number three as he goes for that elusive first championship belt. We're ready to go here in week three. Casey Laser Wolf Nines taking on Brandon Feenstra. <laughs> Feenstra and Nines touch tips of the axes. And we are set to go right, here in week number another. three. Laser Wolf focusing in, getting ready to go, and we are underway. Yeah, you can see both players uh, coming in, a record of six and two for Casey Laser Wolf Nines, Brandon at five and three, so two very skilled competitors. This should be a fantastic matchup, Joey. Couple of fives to start this one for Nines and Feenstra. And again, Brandon doing a really good job of eliminating those threes and fours from his game. He's really kind of starting to hone in on this five and six uh, ring. And then again, for Casey, he's always just trying to focus in on that bullseye. You know, he's eliminated those threes. Sometimes he gets stuck in a little bit of a four rut, but, you know, really looking at that five and six ring. These two off to a hot start. They're really dialed in, nothing but fives, and they haven't been missing the bullseye by much. It looks like Feenster might have our first bullseye of the match, and indeed he does. Yeah, really nice throw there by Brandon. You see the axe popping through in the left-hand side of the blade there. So he takes a commanding two-point lead going into the fourth throw. A lot of battle acts to go here in this one between Laser Wolf and Brandon Feenstra. Oh, and right on cue, Casey Nines throws okay. his first bullseye to get within throw, one of Brandon's Feenstra. One yeah, point. really nice throw there by Casey and a uh, nice five there by Brandon as well. Still has a one-point lead. Casey doing a nice job of finding that bullseye and making up a point. Well, that one gets away from Feenstra a little bit, Four and Brandon. that might be a bullseye for Laser Wolf. Back. It is. Back-to-back -to -back bullseyes for nines. Yeah, just a great throw there. Looks like Brandon, the axe just got stuck in his hand a little bit, so now he is down by one point going into the turn, and Casey with a chance at a unicorn. So they'll switch sides and get set to go for the second half. We'll see if Casey Nines can get a unicorn. He just missed it there. It's a four. Yeah, so you can see, Joey, the top part of Casey's blade was not popping through on that five ring, so even if it hits that, uh, that ring, it needs to pop through in the wood on both sides, and it just wasn't, so it was a four. Well, there's a great throw from okay, Laser Casey Wolf. A flush bullseye Ooh. right through the heart of that red. Feenster throws a bullseye as well. We've got a great one brewing here. A one-point lead for nines with three throws to go. Yeah, just a great throw there by both competitors. A really nice flush bullseye there for Laser Wolf. Looks like the axe uh, might four. be popping through. Yeah, on the four ring there for Brandon. So 
He loses another point here on Casey Laserwolf. 9s, 41 to 39. Joey going into the last two throws. Nothing like a nail biter to get the night started here, Joey. Pressure is on for both of these competitors. Ooh. Nine's looking to put it away. Wow. And, and you can see is Brandon a... is just so disappointed right there. Axe getting away from him. Lucky it's a four, though, not a three. All right. Ten so he's Casey's still within striking points. distance. Crazier things have happened. We'll see if Feenster goes for a kill shot. He's not indicated that he will. He's just going to try and get a bullseye. Four, Brandon. And this Five, one is in the books. Laser Wolf puts it away with a five. He gets the right, win over game. Brandon Feenstra, 51-47, the final. Yeah, so both competitors, really nice start to the game here for both competitors, but you can see Brandon just got stuck in that four rut from that fifth throw on. He did have a nice bullseye on his seventh throw, but uh, just too many fours in the game to compete against Casey Laser Wolf Nines, and what can you say about Laser Wolf? Just a fantastic uh, showing to get the night started. A chance at a unicorn, couldn't make it happen, but uh, three sixes, fives, and a couple fours, I'm sure he'll take that. Absolutely. Laser Wolf looking incredible as always. We'll see if perhaps this is the season that KC Nines can finally get that elusive Battle Axe Championship. We are set to go here with our next matchup here in week number three. Before we do, here is Beth Jen on her week to week goals. I think just the repetition and practice, um, kind of getting that muscle memory down has really been helpful. Um, you know, with kind of couple weeks off in between the leagues uh, I didn't throw a whole lot and I came back and it kind of came right back to me so I was very happy with that so just week to week I'm trying to continue to make sure that my elbow doesn't go out make sure that I'm staying lined up and just get that muscle memory so I can really dial it in and hopefully no threes. Well Beth Jen just keeps getting better and better Bobby. Absolutely this is her second league that she's in but she's definitely progressing very well. She's ready to go here in week number three Beth Jen ready to take on Sarah Fitting. And this is also Sarah Fitting's second league as well, so both competitors are doing a really good job of putting up some positive points, really making some waves in this league here, Joey. Beth coming in at 2-6, and six, but don't let that record fool you. She can score with anybody. Oh, course, and then uh, Sarah Fitting at 6-2. and two. Well, a 5 to start this one for Beth Jen, and it's a 4 for Sarah Fitting, so Jen out to the early lead. And like with every new competitor, Joey, they're always just looking to tweak their throws. You know, they're trying to find that rhythm that really puts the positive points on the board. Uh, Looks like a nice bullseye there for Beth. We'll have to get a closer look. And Jenny does rule it a bullseye, so a three-point lead going into the third throw. But finding that rhythm, Joey, you know, finding that, uh, that method, that process that you get set up. And then just having that muscle memory to really hone in on that release point. Yeah, once you get dialed in with that muscle memory and the rhythm, that's when you start putting up the really big points and you just see those consistent fives and sixes and, and those rounds of 55-plus. Absolutely. And, Joey, we've seen this in, in other leagues past, other matchups too. You know, you can find that rhythm in a match, so you can really surprise a competitor. So one thing we always want to remind people is that it's all about the points here at Battle Axe, you know, a record of 2-6. and six, And 6-2 uh, right. and two can be a little bit deceiving because it's all about the points. And you never know when a competitor can come out of nowhere and put up some monster points. Beth Jen is in a rhythm right now. She's built a four-point lead, and it looks like she just threw another flush bullseye. Nice. What a first half for Beth Jen in this one. She leads it 28-22. They'll switch sides and get ready to go for the second half. Absolutely. Just doing a great job of eliminating those fours from her uh, game. Just fives and sixes all around, putting up a really nice first Sarah round five. and a really nice score five, here. Sarah, four, Beth. Well, the first four of the match for Beth Jen. Sometimes when you switch sides, it can take all of that rhythm and momentum right away. Correct. Yeah, and the axe getting away from her just a little bit. Not too far off the mark, though. So definitely something Sarah able to capitalize and take a point on her. Uh, five and five. Well, a couple fives from Jen and Fitting on their seventh throw. It remains a five-point lead for Beth Jen with three throws to go. Well, and another thing too, Joey, is that with any new competitor and even some of our seasoned veterans, you know, eliminating the drops is such a crucial part of axing and a very important part of any player's progress. And both these players have just done a great job of eliminating that from their game. Well, a bullseye from Sarah Fitting. She's gaining a little bit of ground, closing the gap. She's within four, two throws to go. Yep, so again, Bath has to just keep putting the pedal to the metal. She cannot leave the door open. And Joey, though. That's exactly what she's done. All right, last it's a three-point lead for Beth Jen heading into the final throw. We'll see if Fitting goes for a kill shot. Nope. She's she... going to go for a bullseye and hope that 
This throw gets away from Beth Jen. Yeah, so if uh, Beth would have thrown a three and Sarah would have hit a bullseye, would have gone into sudden death overtime, but that was not the case, Joey. A couple fours to end the matchup, 50-47. to 47. Well, a great performance from Beth Jen. She gets the win, 50-47. to 47. Yeah, improves her record to 3-6. and six. Uh, Sarah falls to 6-3, and three, but really the tail of the tape here, Joey, is those first five throws from Beth. You can really see three sixes, two fives to Sarah's four fours and one bullseye. So Beth did a really good job of creating a lead and doing a good job of maintaining that lead and not letting Sarah back in this game. And both of these competitors did a terrific job of just eliminating the mistakes. Not a single three in this match. Beth Jen talked about it before Correct. the match. Didn't want to throw the threes. That's exactly what she did. She put up an impressive round of 50 to get the win. We are just getting started here in week number three on Battle Axe. We've got a lot more action still to come. Stay tuned for more Battle Axe here on MC22. Welcome back to Battle Axe here at the Boston Axe Throwing Range in Dubuque, Iowa for week three action in this spring league. I'm Joey Danya alongside Bobby Bradford bringing you all of the action. We're set to go here with our next matchup in week number three. Let's get right to the action right now. It's going to be Cody Yoakum taking on Kyle Gall. So Yoakum off to a great start this season, 7-1. Okay. and one. Kyle Gull still looking for his first win. Still looking for his first victory. Kyle uh, rejoining the league, took a couple of leagues off, but uh, three, back five. in action now and Sorry, just getting scared. back into the groove of things, Joey. Good start for Cody Yoakum. He throws a 5. Kyle Gull throws a 3. Oh, you were fine. I called yours before you started So you can see Kyle it. just <laughs> doing his best to eliminate those threes and fours from his game, trying to focus in on that five and six right, ring. Cody. Cody, on the other Three hand, Kyle. is really kind of trying to take that next step to eliminating those fours from his throw, honing into that five and six ring, maybe even tackling a couple kill shots. Well, Cody Yoakum quickly building a three-point lead here over Kyle Gall. There's the best throw of the day thus far for Kyle four four. Gall. It's a four. And it's a four for Yoakum as well, so it remains a three-point game. Almost a carbon copy throw there, Joey, by Cody Yoakum. And you see Cody has his routine of spinning the axe to just kind of keep loose, keep calm. And one thing I'm noticing with Kyle's throw, it looks like there's a he's holding on to the axe uh, a little bit too long, creating a little bit too much rotation. Kyle. So it's just not, uh, not right. finding his Good release throw. point. Cody's up by four. Yeah, still very early on in the season, and Kyle Gall... Still working through some kinks, trying to get the rust off of the axe there. Yep. Oh. Ooh. And that was a, that was a good throw right on target. Exactly. But like you said, he held on just a little too long, and the axe just couldn't stick into the wood there. Wow. A devastating drop. And Cody Yoakum has a commanding lead now after the first half, 22-14. to 14. Well, and Kyle has to just remain positive, knowing that that axe was going to be a five, if not a six. Uh, uh, just a devastating drop there. It looks like that could be a five. Bullseye, Kyle. Oh, it's a bullseye. Wow. So the bottom part of that blade popping through on both sides for that bullseye. So a nice response to a drop, Joey. Got to have a short memory in Battle Axe. And Kyle Gall switches sides and gets off to a great wow. start here in the second half. Three, Kyle. Four, Cody. Yep. It looks like a Cody's also getting stuck here in a little bit of a four rut. Like I said at the beginning of the match, Joey, it's something that he really wants to eliminate from his game. You see all these competitors, you know, the Matts, the Chris's, the Casey's of the world, they consider that four to be a mistake. And if you want to contend for a championship, yeah, you've got to get on that level where the fours are very rare mm -hmm. and it's pretty much nothing but fives and sixes. Cody Yoakum and Kyle Gall with a couple of fours on their eighth throw. It remains a seven-point advantage. For Yoakum, which is two throws to go. Well, and back to the five and six discussion, Joey. Oh, just another devastating drop there for Kyle. Uh, drop. But when you're throwing consistent fives and sixes, and then the other opponent is throwing fours, All I mean, right. you're just creating throw, this, this gap that is almost insurmountable at some point in time in the matchup. Cody Yoakum looking to put an exclamation point on this one. We'll see if he can get a bullseye in. Four Kyle, five Cody. Almost got a five, and Close. he gets the win. 44-31, Cody Yoakum, the victor over Kyle Gall. So Kyle Gall, 
Unfortunately, falls to 0 and 9, but he does have the one bullseye on the sixth throw, the only bullseye of the matchup, Joey. So uh, Cody with uh, looks like four fives there, and the rest are fours. So something he wants to eliminate from his match or from his game. Uh, focus more on that five and six ring, find those bullseyes, but still an impressive round of 44 to improve his record to eight and one. Kyle with a 31, but a couple of those devastating drops really affected his score. Cody Yoakum improving his record to eight and one on the season. He's off to a great start, and he's going to get right back to action here in week number three. Cody Yoakum ready to go for another matchup here against Everett Shure. Cody Yoakum looking to improve to 9-1 and one and just keep the momentum rolling after the win over Kyle Gall. Yeah, so uh, Everett, again, another uh, new competitor. It's second league, second time in this league, but definitely can make some waves. It looks like a five for Cody Yoakum to start, five, and it is a five, so popping through on both sides of that blade. Everett Shure off to a slow start record-wise, one and seven. Yes. Mr. Kill looking to turn things around here in week number three. There's a great shot from Shure. Uh, four and four. Yeah, initially we haven't seen Mr. Kill go for a lot of kill shots. I think uh, he's just kind of focusing more on that, that progression into that four, five, and six ring. Um, he's never really had a problem with drops before, um, but he has a, he's got stuck in that three rut a little bit. We'll see if that one's a four five. Four. Nope, it's a four for sure. Ooh. Wow. So the bottom part of the, uh, the top part of that blade must not have been popping through in that five ring, Joey, because I thought, like you thought, that there was a five, a flush five, but that was not the case. It was a good shot there. You saw... However, it's holding the axe. It's also a very important, crucial part of throwing an axe is how you're holding that axe. Make sure that weight is balanced and distributed. All right, fifth throw. A lot of people want to get up there, two. grip the axe really hard, and throw that way. But that's how you end up holding on to the axe a little bit too long and have drops or miss throws. You can see, sure, it's just a very delicate touch and release Correct. when he lets that axe fly. He throws a five there, his first five of the matchup, so he gets within one of Cody Yoakum, who will bring a 22-21 lead into the second half. Yeah, so Cody's still looking for that first bullseye of the night here. He's, oh my gosh. Wow, so a rare drop from Cody Yoakum. And then Everett with a four to take a three-point lead. So Cody's just got to have a short memory, shake that off, and just focus on that board. Well, there's a great throw from Shure. Looks like that could be, yeah, that's a five. So not popping through the red bullseye, not popping through on the right-hand side of the Dax there for Everett, but still gains a point on Cody Yoakum. He's got a four-point lead going into the eighth throw, 30-26. to 26. Still a chance for Cody, though. He's got to find that bullseye if he wants to have a chance in this game. Bullseye, Everett. Well, it's Shure finding the bullseye there. Absolutely. So Everett with a nice bullseye to gain another point on Cody Yoakum. Up by five. Yes. And look at that. Mr. Kill going for a kill shot. As love it. Teddy KJB would say, very aggressive. <laughs> I love it. So Mr. Kill going for the kill shot off the mark there. So Cody finding a good time to throw his first bullseye of the night. Right. Takes a one-point lead. Up by one. And there we just saw it again. Mr. Kill is... Out of control. He's going for another kill shot here and the win. I love it. Focusing up. Mr. Oh. Kill with a dagger. Wow. A kill shot for the win from Everett Shore. Wow. How about that, Bobby? What can you say? I mean, just the guts to go for it, Joey, and he went for it. He was down by one, so definitely in a position where Cody has only thrown one bullseye in this matchup. He was only down by one going into the 10th throw. Could have very easily just kind of Tried to aim for that bullseye five and hope that Cody threw a four. Send this thing into sudden death overtime. But he uh, he had the guts to go for it in the last throw and came out the victor. That's why they call him Mr. Kill. You know, he had gone for the kill shot on his ninth throw, just missed it by a little bit. Probably good practice right before that tenth throw. Really honed in and hit it for the win. Yeah, it's probably something where Everett thought, you know, even if we tie this match up, I probably have to throw a kill shot at any anyway. So he just got ahead of it and came out the victor. Well, much more Battle Axe still to come here in week number three. We'll bring you all the action straight ahead here on MC22. Stay tuned for more Battle Axe.
Welcome back to Battle Axe here at the Bustin' Axe Throwing Range in Dubuque, Iowa. Joey Danya alongside Bobby Bradford. And Bobby, this has been an exciting start to week three. We just saw a thrilling finish from Everett Shore to get a win over Cody Yoakum. Absolutely. It's been a great night of matchup so far and looking forward to the rest that we have on the slate. Well, before we get back to the action, we're going to throw it down to Beth Jen. She's going to talk about how everyone in this league just keeps getting better and better. I think it's great. You know, someone that's newer to uh, axe throwing like me, um, it's not that I'm going to lose every game by a ton of points. You know, even last season, I noticed, you know, the first couple weeks I had low scores, but then, you know, I kind of fit in with the, the rest of the pack and we're all kind of moving up. So coming into this season, uh, it's been interesting in the first few weeks to kind of see where everybody's scores are starting to line up. And I've noticed they're higher than even last season, but we're all still really close together, which makes every game interesting and every game fun and competitive. Well, with everybody improving in this league, the defending champion knows he's got to get even better as well. Here is Matt Bradshaw on elevating his game. My average is sitting between the high 53, low 54, and I I'm, I'm, feel like I've plateaued a little bit. I need to be able to get over that hurdle and I think stay with it to get me to you know a, a higher average. I'm hoping this this season I can get at least a point higher. That's going to take some work, but you know that that comes down to one or two bullseyes per game is what it comes down to. So I need to be able to find that consistency and get in that zone and try to make it happen. Matt Bradshaw looking to become the first back-to-back -back Battle Axe champion as he looks to win the championship for the third time in his remarkable career. Matt the Magic Man Bradshaw set to go here in week three. He's going to take on Beth Jen. Should be an exciting matchup here, Joey. Matt, of course, coming in at 8-0. Beth with a nice victory already tonight, improving her record to 3-6. and six. And she's just got to look to carry that momentum that she had in that first game over to this one. Yeah, she put up a round of 50 earlier here today to get a win over Sarah Fitting. And a round of 50 will win you a lot of games, but she's probably going to have to be even better if she wants to beat the Magic Man here in this one. Absolutely. Matt with a nice bullseye there to start the match off, but Beth with a nice five, not that far off from the bullseye herself, Joey. And as Matt's talked about time and time again, ooh, that's getting away from Beth a little bit there. But as Matt's talked about time and time again, Joey, you can't focus on your opponent. You just have to focus on the board. Well, Jenny's going to come in and get a look at this one. It is a bullseye, back-to-back -back bulls for Bradshaw to start this one, a shot at a unicorn here on his third throw. Yep, so Beth's just got to focus up on that five and six ring. Axe getting away from her a little bit on that last throw. It looks like it got away from her a little bit there. Four, and it is a bullseye there for Matt, the Magic Band Bradshaw, so the axe popping through on the right-hand side of that blade. Joey? Nothing but bullseyes for Bradshaw in this one. He quickly builds a five-point lead over Beth Jen. Well, and Joey, to my point that I made earlier in the show, you know, this is what I'm talking about. When you're throwing up sixes consistently and the other player's throwing up fours, that gap just well, becomes that. insurmountable at some time. So you really need to, you know, kind of focus on that five and six ring. All if right, you're going to lose a point, you want to do it four. point by point. You don't want to lose multiple points in one throw. Yeah, Beth Jen is playing well, but Bradshaw is just playing Correct. so well that it's hard to keep up. Yep. And then that's where the mental aspect comes in. Now all of a sudden you know Four you're down by X amount and you're starting to force throws. You're not uh, really executing the way that you'd like. Matt with a nice bullseye there on his fifth throw to take a six-point lead going into the turn. Bradshaw and Jen switch sides. We are underway in the second half of this one. That one might be a five from Jen, but it looks like a four. It looks like a four, and it is a four, but Beth is starting to move closer and closer to that five and six ring, so... Not uh, releasing the axe and not holding onto the axe a little too long. Finding that nice release point that finds that center of the board. Just getting ever so close. That could be a five popping through on the... Four buff bullseye match. There's a flush bullseye for the Magic Man. His fifth bullseye of the match. So a nine point lead going into the eighth throw. Again, Beth's just got to focus on that five and six ring. Really not worried about the win or loss here. Just kind of putting positive points on the board is the name of the game. And a great throw there. Looks like a five. Could be a bullseye. And it looks like a... Bye, Matt. Bye, Ooh. Matt. So very close for both competitors. Almost carbon copy throws there. But both competitors very close to a bullseye. Matt still with a nine-point lead. The Magic Man cool, calm, and collected as always. Nice throw there by Beth. That could be a five popping through on the 
top part of that board, but maybe a four. Five and it is a five, so nice throw there by Beth to get closer and closer to that five and six ring. All right, last throw. Matt is up by nine. So Matt Bradshaw looking to put a bow on this one. He's going to improve to nine and zero. Oh. Beth Jen looking for a Ooh. nice final throw as well, but that one gets away from her. It's a three for Jen and a four, it looks like, for Bradshaw. And you can hear Matt with a little bit of disgust in his voice after throwing that four. Well, Matt Bradshaw is human, but he gets the win, 53-43 to over Beth Jen. Yeah, so Matt with a nice round there of 53. You can see he had five bullseyes there. He had uh, three fives and a couple fours. You can hear him at the end of the 10th throw, Joey. He was a little disgusted that he threw that four. But, again, a 53, very impressive score. Will win you a lot of games here in Battle Axe. And for Beth, great job of maintaining that four and five uh, throw only the one three in her 10th throw her only three of the night but just gotta start finding that bullseye a little bit more yeah it's such a mental game we've talked about it time and time again here's stephanie prine on the mental aspect of axe throwing yeah i mean i think it's something i still need to do which is just worry about myself go through my own little checklist and just pretend like i'm at practice you know um it is i mean it's harder when the cameras are rolling, right? Because everybody wants to do well and um, be perceived well. And there is like definitely friendly banter and sportsmanship. You know, it's, it's so you want to do better. That, that would be my thing, I guess, is just pretend like the other person's not there. It's just you. It's just you and the board. Well, Stephanie Pride, expensive, difficult, and ready to go here in week number three, Bobby. Looking forward to this next matchup, Joey. Haley Sure is going to be the opposition for Stephanie Prine here in week three. We're ready to go. Prine and Sure touch tips, and they're ready to get things going here in week number three. Yes, Stephanie Prine time coming in here at four and four. Ooh, almost a almost footfall. Almost a footfall. We four and three. never see those anymore. I mean, that was something we used to see quite often when a lot of these players were getting accustomed to the game. But as every player has gotten more familiar with the game, Something you just don't see anymore, but Stephanie Prine, you're just a there. little too excited here in week three. Absolutely, and for anyone that's uh, just joining, a football is when a player crosses the throwing line before the score is officially read by the official. So they would take a zero in their throw if they do cross the line, even if they accidentally fall and lose their balance. Well, Prine looking to get into that five and six range here. Well, a nice throw uh, there by Haley. Haley for Stephanie. You can see the wood popping through on the right-hand side of the board there for Haley to tie this match up going into the fourth throw. And Stephanie, of course, made a change to her axe last season. And Haley with the very colorful axe and the double over the hand throw. Four, Haley. Five, Stephanie. Well, the first five of the match for Stephanie Prine. She's got a one-point right. lead Fifth over Haley Shore. up by one. Yeah, so this is the kind of matchup, Joey, where they're just going to be going back and forth, no doubt. Stephanie doing a great job of putting some positive points on the board, and Haley in her first league just doing a really great job of uh, progressing. Four, Stephanie. So a couple fours there, 21 to 20 going into the turn. Both these players doing a really good job. They'll switch sides and get ready to go for the second half. These players... Four, four consistently throwing fours. They're going to try and hone in on that five and six range here in the second half of this one to see if they can build a little separation. Well, Joey, we've seen it with other players too. When they start to progress from the, you know, from the beginning of their playing career, you know, they're eliminating the drops, they're eliminating the ones and twos and the threes, but then they get stuck in the four rut, you know, the four uh, Bermuda Triangle hole, basically, where it seems like every throw they have is just, it's very close to that five and six ring, but it's always... Just that four. Well, Stephanie Prine gets out of that four funk there on her seventh throw with a five as she extends her lead to three. I think that's what we'll call it, Joey, the four funk. And it looks like that could be a five of the blade popping through on the top part of that blade for Stephanie. But unfortunately, it is a four. So a three-point lead here for Stephanie. She's got to do a, a really good job of keeping putting positive points on the board. She cannot let Haley back in this matchup with a five or a six. 
Well, incredible focus from both nice of these throw. women. And a great throw from yeah. Stephanie Prine. Really Looks good. like it could be the first bullseye of the match, and it is. What a time for it. Stephanie Prine All extends right, the lead throw. to five. Uh, Final throw seven. coming. Yeah, it looks like that new axe that Stephanie has uh, switched to is the one that's working for her. Looks like it's hitting the uh, board a little more flush. Another nice throw there. It looks like Four that could be a five. Five, Stephanie. And it is. So very close to a bullseye, not All off right, by much. Thirty-nine Haley. Well, what a finish for seconds. Stephanie Prine. She gets the win over Haley Shore, 45 to 39. Yeah, just a great job by both competitors. Stephanie improves her record to 5 and 4 with an, a round of 45. Haley falls to 3 and 6, but uh, just got stuck in a little bit of that four funk that we were talking about, Joey. A couple threes there in the match, but a round of 39, definitely something to improve on. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing her progress throughout the season. Yeah, and a great job from Stephanie Prine of just eliminating the mistakes. Not a single three for her round of 45. Both of these competitors with a lot of positives to build on here as we look forward to the postseason in just a few weeks. It's been a great start to week number three, and we're not done yet. Much more battle acts still to come. We'll bring it to you straight ahead here on MC22. Stay tuned. You're watching Battle Axe. Welcome back to Battle Axe. It's week number three here from the Bustin' Axe Throwing Range in Dubuque, Iowa. As always, I'm Joey Danya alongside Bobby the Blade Bradford. Bobby, it's been an exciting start here to week number three. We're not done just yet. No, it's been a great time so far, Joey, and really looking forward to these next couple matches. Consistency is the name of the game. Here's Hannah Brussel on her consistency. I think right now I'm, I'm working more on um, being consistent for hitting the bullseye. I think I figured out my throw pretty well. I felt really good about the last two weeks. Well, last week was a little iffy. Week one was great for me. Um, practice tonight has been going well, so here's to hoping I can just keep on what I'm doing You know, during practice. My, my throw feels good, and hopefully I can take the top of the leaderboard. Hannah Brussel getting better and better each and every week here on Battle X. We've got a great rivalry that's began between Matt Thunder Haas and Brandon Feenstra. Here's Brandon on the rivalry. Uh, uh, bring it on, brother. Uh, you know, I, that average spot is, is mine. That's, that's taken. You know, so he's going to have to work a little harder for it. Thunder. Lurking in the shadows, staring down Brandon Feenstra. Yeah, definitely a rivalry we'll be looking forward to when those two lock horns. Hannah Brussel ready to lock horns with Brandon Feenstra right now. Yeah, so again, Hannah coming in at five or four and four, excuse me, Brandon at five and four, two of the top competitors in this league. And this should be a dandy. Oh, it looks like a four from Feenstra. It might be a five. Uh, it is a five. He got the bottom of the blade in that into that five ring. So a great start for both Brussel and Feenstra. Six five. Hannah happy feed Brussel after the first throw. Absolutely. And uh, Brandon, although he fell to KC nines in our first matchup of the night, looking to carry over that positive forty seven that he that he scored. So another nice throw. It looks like a five. Five Brandon for Hannah. And it's a four for Hannah. So we are all tied up, Joey, going into the third throw. But again, what Hannah was talking about in her interview. Working on that consistency, you know, she has kind of made that step to find that five and six ring much more consistently. Looks like another five from Feenstra. Five, Brandon. Ooh. And a five from Brussels. She just missed the bullseye there. I was going to say, she looks, that looks really close to a bullseye. bullseye Hannah. And they She's are going to change it. She's got a bullseye. Oh, really? Her second of the match. Hannah Brussel takes the lead, 16 to tell, 15. You yeah, you can see from the action cam there, Joey, the top part of that blade was popping through on both sides of that red bullseye there. So a nice bullseye here for Hannah. Another nice throw there by Brandon. He's really consistently finding that five and six ring. Bullseye, Brandon. First bullseye of the match for Brandon Feenstra. Just like that, he takes the lead right back right. from Brussel. 21-20, oh, Feenstra one. heading into the fifth throw. Yeah, and as you can see, Joey, with Brandon's throw, he is just not missing by much. With some of the other players in the league, you can see the axe kind of landing all over the board, and that is just not the case for Brandon tonight. Brandon. Another nice throw there by Brandon. Axe getting away from Hannah a little bit. She's getting a little bit of that four funk, Joey. Brandon Feenstra dialed in. Nothing but fives to go along with that 
bullseye in his first half. He'll bring the lead into the second half. Four and four. It looks like a couple fours there. And again, though, although it's a four, it's still not that far off from that five and six ring there for Brandon Feenstra. So a nice job. He's got a two-point lead. Hannah just has to focus on her throw, not worry about Brandon and what he's doing. Hannah, happy feet, Brussel, taking her time. Nice. And Brandon, dialing in a bullseye from Brussel, her third of the match. And just like that, we're all tied. 34-34 with three throws to go. Yeah, Hannah hasn't thrown a five in this match, but she has had some timely bullseyes, so doing a nice job of coming back in this matchup. Brandon, that looks like it's a four. It could be a five if popping through in the bottom part of that blade. Four and four. But it is a four. We are all tied up with two throws to go, Joey. I don't know if you smell sudden death. Well, it's been that kind of a week. We've had some thrillers thus far, but we haven't had a sudden death match just yet. Maybe we'll get it right here. The way these two competitors are throwing, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. It was a nice throw there by Brandon. By Brandon for Hannah. But well, here we big are. Big throw from Brandon Feenstra. He's going to take a two-point right, lead throw, into Brandon the final throw points. after throwing a bullseye on his ninth throw. So Hannah needs Brandon to throw a four, and she needs to hit a bullseye to send, her, send this thing into sudden death. And looks like Brandon did his part. Hannah's got a chance here to force sudden death. If she can get a oh. bullseye... And it looks like she five, just Hannah. missed it. She did. All right, good so game. close. Hannah, Brandon, Brandon Feenstra hangs on to get the win. 48-47. Wow, so just a great job by Hannah to come back in this matchup. She stick, stuck around, was able to take the lead there on that seventh throw, uh, but unfortunately just a couple fours and then just ever so close to a bullseye on that tenth throw, Joey. And uh, Brandon, though, nice job of improving on his record earlier in the night. He went from 47 to 48, so just a really good, consistent overall showing here for Brandon tonight, going to 6-4, and four, and Hannah falls to 4-5. and five. Yeah, great job out of both of these competitors. No big mistakes from either one of them, and they're both looking poised to make a, a deep run when we get to that postseason a few weeks down the road. This league is is all about camaraderie. There's It's kind of like a family. Here is Matt the Thunder Haas on this league's camaraderie. You know, everybody's super nice around here. Hannah, you got Gina is really great. You got uh, Stephanie, Matt Bradshaw, super great guy. Helped me out a lot with my throwing as of day one from in the league. So, uh, you know, there, there is competition here, but there is a lot of friendship and helping each other out. And want, everybody wants to see each other do better. Uh, and then there's Brandon, um, scheming, always wanting to stick ahead of somebody. Uh, wanting to put people down, uh, wanting to push him lower into the ranks, thinks he can stay average all the time. But uh, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to do what I did last fall, put him back in the lower rungs where he belongs. Well, this is really personal between the Thunder and Brandon Feenstrup. Yeah, it's really gearing up to be something to see. Matt the Thunder Haas. Look at that look. Ready to take on Chris D'Onofrio. Well, Matt is a man on a mission this league. He's let that he's let that be known. But uh, Chris, the dagger D'Onofrio, is also a man on a mission as well. well we're underway here between Haas and D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio bringing a perfect record of 8-0 and into this one. So a couple nice throws there to start. And, of course, Chris, one of the better throwers in this league, one of the more consistent five- and six-ring throwers. Just a tough matchup for anybody. And Matt with the, looks like a four there. Four Matt, five Chris. And that's a five there for Chris, so a one-point lead going into the th third throw. You can see Chris is, Chris is getting mad at the fives now. That's how uh, focused and locked in he is. But he, Matt, of course, doesn't waste any time when he gets up there. He is really a grip it and rip it kind of guy. Five Matt, bullseye Chris. Yeah, we talked earlier in the show about kind of that delicate approach that Everett Shure has. Correct. Not so delicate for Matt Haas. He really grips the bottom of that handle and just lets it fly. He lets it fly, and you can see, I mean, there, there's just no other way for Matt to do it. I mean, he just has to grip it and rip it. It looks like a four there for him, four and Matt, it looks like Chris. a rare four there for Chris. So All right, fifth throw. You can see he's a, is up by two. a little disgusted in himself, but 20-20 going into the fifth throw. Chris just got to focus up on that five and six ring. Nice. There's a great throw from the Thunder. Really nice throw there by Thunder, and an even better throw. Oh, it's a five, actually. It looks like a bullseye. 
from the naked eye. It looks like Chris is going to call for a second ruling here. Bullseye, Chris. So it is a bullseye for D'Onofrio. He'll bring the lead into the second half of this one. He will, so he's uh, finding that bullseye ring. Now he's got to switch sides. We'll see how that affects him. Ooh, and the act getting away from uh, Matt there a little bit. Four Matt, five Chris. So a two-point lead for Chris going into the seventh throw. So both competitors doing a really good job of, of eliminating no real bad throws here, Joey. No threes, no drops. Matt Haas right within striking distance as Chris D'Onofrio nice looks Bye, to Matt. put it away. Looks like that's a bullseye. Five, Chris. Ooh. So Just missed it. So Matt Haas with the bullseye there. He gets within one. Wow, so you can see very, very close. Chris not challenging it, not getting for the uh, a second opinion there. But he's got a one-point lead going up against the Thunder and that another four there for or for Matt, excuse me. And it looks like a four there for Chris, Joey. Yeah, it looks four like Matt. he just missed the five ring there with the top of the blade. Five, Chris. Ooh, so well, it is a five. I stand corrected. It's a five for D'Onofrio. He extends the lead to two. Two throws to go. We're on nine. Looks like Chris is getting a, a score check here on the ninth throw, Chris. I think uh, Chris just called for the kill shot here, Joey. Chris, the dagger D'Onofrio. Pulling a page Ooh. from the playbook of Everett Shore. Did he get it? He is very, very close. So a, a bold move here by Chris the Dagger D'Onofrio going for a kill shot on the ninth throw. Only up by two. Jenny's initial ruling is a zero. But Matt threw a four. So he takes a two-point lead. And it looks like they're going to get an extra look at this. Chris knows how important this point is. I'm gonna. I'll be surprised. Maybe they call somebody else in here. Well, Eric Shizzle now taking a look at it. This is as close as it gets, and this is crucial in this match. So it is ruled a zero. So Matt takes a two-point lead. The scope being the determining factor there, not popping through. And as you can see, Chris is not none too pleased, and it looks like he's calling for it again, Joey. Wow. The dagger. Going for back-to-back -back kill shots. Can he do what Everett Shore did here? Ooh, Just missed it. That's a no-doubter right there. So a zero. Right. So Matt the Thunder Haas Chris, with the upset that. takes the lead, takes the uh, victory, forty-eight to forty-one. Joey. Yeah, great job out of Matt Haas. A real consistent round. Nothing but fours, fives, and sixes to get the win over the very aggressive Chris D'Onofrio. Yeah, it's an interesting move there for Chris. Of course, he is uh, one of the better players in this league, so maybe he's just working on the kill shot. He's kind of working to have that as a tool in his bag that he can have at any point in time. So a very aggressive move, still an impressive round of 41, even with those two misses. But uh, to your point, Joey, no threes on the board, no drops, aggressive play, really a fun matchup. Yeah, those kill shots can be crucial when it comes time for the postseason, and having that shot in his arsenal is something Chris D'Onofrio would love to have. Well, that's going to do it here for week number three on Battle X, but before we sign off, it's time for our postgame wrap-up. Well, surprise, surprise, Matt the Magic Man Bradshaw is the man everyone is chasing. Bradshaw, a perfect 12-0, he's averaging 56 points per game. Behind Bradshaw, it's Chris D'Onofrio, Casey Nines, Hannah Brussel, Eric Schizel, Cody Yoakum, Sarah Fitting, Brandon Feenstra, Stephanie Prine, and Beth Jen rounding out the top 10. Yeah, really impressive leaderboard. As you can see, Casey and Chris are not too far off from Matt the Magic Man Bradshaw, so it should be an interesting tournament here, Joey. Looking forward to it. That's going to do it here for week three on Battle Axe. Alongside my partner, Bobby the Blade Bradford, this is Joey Danya signing off. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on Battle Axe.